Hello everyone, this is Sumerian. I am uh, coming back with part two of our satellite receiver tutorial. In our last tutorial, we built this neat little 4-bit uh, counter system that would allow us to use satellite receiver to send 4 bits of data from toy box to toy box. And I can uh, just imagine some of you out there saying, yay, 4 bits, that's a total of 15 technically 16 numbers, but 15 usable numbers that we can move through satellite receiver, which could already do 10, so hooray. And to that I say, well, we only used four triggers, there were six left, so it was technically 21, but I get what you're saying. What we're going to do this time is we are going to actually add three more bits of logic into our, uh, our system here. And as I said before, for every additional bit you add, you double the value of the next number. So if you recall, uh, this one represents number 1, 2, 4, 8. So if we add another logic gate, it will then be representing the number 16. And that will give us a grand total of 32 different numbers we can use from 0 to 31. The next one will represent the value of 32 and the next one will represent the value of 64. So with 7 bits we can actually do 128 different number combinations from 0 to 127. And I think that's pretty good for trying to move a count from one toy box to another. You can, like I said before, go all the way up to 10, but in this tutorial we're just going to do 7. And this time I'm starting this toy box because we already have the logic understood here of how we did this. I'm just going to quickly set up these three other bits in the exact same way as the other ones. So just like every other time, an output is going to close or turn on station 5 and an input block is going to turn off station 5. And again, we want to say when an input block signal comes out of that gate, it sends the input to this one, and we chain it the whole way down so that every single time it takes longer and longer for each of these uh, logic gates as you're progressing down the chain before any of them activate. Uh, because this one represents the number 16, so it's actually going to take 16 inputs before this one is ever activated by the way that this circuit is working. Uh, look up the last one. And of course we want to do uh, just like we did before where in each logic gate when we turn on a station we're going to close the logic gate and when we turn it off we're going to uh, open the logic gate. So, Turn on station 5. We'll close this logic gate. Turn off station 5. We'll open the logic gate. And this is basically how we're building what I consider it's not really a flip flop circuit, but it's close enough that I'm going to call it flip flop circuit. Every time an input comes through a logic gate, it switches to the, to the opposite state that it's currently in. So there we go, we've now added uh, to our entire input system, we now have seven possible bits. We're controlling seven different stations on a satellite receiver. So now we should have the possibility of passing a number anywhere between 0 and 127 to this next toy box. As I was mentioning in my last tutorial, um, getting to the number 15 is really easy with a satellite receiver because of the fact that we're just incrementing by 1, 2, 4, and 8. So this last uh, station, station 4, increments that counter by 8, which is easy. But station 5 represents 16, station 6 represents 32, and station 7 represents number 64. 
and you can only increment the counter by 10 at a time. So what we're now going to have to do is design some logic that is going to take care of that addition for us. And I want some logic that's going to do it fast. Yes, you could technically go into a counter and do an iteration cycled, which will uh, send an output however many times that counter's number is currently set to. Uh, but I find it it's very slow. It even for five or six repetitions, it takes a while to do it. It takes a good three or four seconds. And I want this to happen relatively quickly. And fortunately, we're going to use some of the logic from my time delayer tutorial, where I'm going to make sure we don't slam that counter with about 20 different uh, count changes at the same time. It probably won't work. We're actually going to uh, spread it out a bit, but not slowly. We're, if we try to use a time delayer even at the one second, it would take a while. So we're going to put in our loop uh, logic as well into this thing. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to start with a logic gate. And this logic gate is going to be set so that if station 5, 6, or 7 are on, an input will come to it. And why we're doing that is because I'm going to leave the first four stations just hooked directly up to that counter because as we saw before, those work. But if station 5, 6, or 7 turns on, that's the only time I need to run my additional logic. So I'm going to only run this extra logic we're about to put in if station 5, 6, or 7 is turned on. Otherwise, I don't need the logic, and I'm not going to use it. And I want to make this a one-shot trigger. So all three of those can give me a possible input. And I only want the output to happen once. So what I'm going to also do is output the in or output to this logic gate, and this logic gate is going to close this logic gate. And that way, we the trigger will only happen once. The first time the trigger happens, this logic gate will then close this logic gate. So from then on, anything would try to go out of input block, which we're not going to hook anything up to. I also want to give this counter a little bit of time because I'm about to slam it with all four of those stations trying to increment its count possibly at the same time. So I'm going to put in a, a single time delay here and all it's going to do is it's going to say if 5, 6, or 7 is on, wait one second. And that is giving our counter time to get the input from the first four stations. Now, what we want to do is we're going to put some more logic gates down. And what these logic gates are going to be doing is they're going to be representing our different stations. That will be station 5, 6, and 7. And so, what I'm going to say is, again, if station 5 turns on, close that logic gate. Station 6 turns on, I'll do the middle one, and station 7 will do the last one. Now, the goal here is that what we're going to do is we are going to check each of these logic gates in the sequence, and any of them that are closed are going to run some additional logic for us to start adding uh, some numbers up into this counter for us. So we're going to start with station 7. So what we'll do is we will say delay completed we're going to input to the station 7 logic gate. And we're also going to say if it's open, which means the station was not turned on because it didn't close, we'll input to the logic 6, or the station 6 logic gate. And if it's open, We'll pass an input down to the station 5 logic gate. That way, if any of them weren't turned on, we can just quickly skip that step. We don't have to do any count for them. We can just skip it. Great. Now, we have to make 
um, a time delay. And if you watch my time delay video, it's actually fairly simple. It's going to involve a logic gate and it's going to involve a counter. And the whole concept behind this is I'm going to set the count to 3 for now. I not, don't want to really see that display because it's going to go fast. And I do have to reset on target reach because I don't want to put in separate logic for that. And what we're going to do is any output from that logic gate will increment plus 1 this counter. And any time its count changes, we input to this logic gate which gives us a loop. This thing will always be running. But what it also gives us is a slight time delay. It's nowhere near a second, but it's a slight time delay enough to let maybe this counter catch up to what we're doing. So what we want to do is we want to send an open to this logic gate from all three of these logic gates uh, when they're from their input block signal. And the reason we want to do that is because during the time delay or circuit, I will occasionally have to close this to stop the circuit from running momentarily. So from all these input blocks, I want to open that logic gate. And I have to do something else because I can't then also say input blocked and do a separate type of input to the device. At the same time, I also want to make sure that input block gets this whole circuit running. So what I'm going to say is when you are opened, increment by one your count. And that way, if I send an output or if this gate is open, the circuit will start. Now next, we need, and this seems like a lot, but trust me, uh, once you start getting up in the numbers, this circuit is actually quite handy. I don't have to handle each of the five, or station five, six, and sevens counting being added to this counter separately. I can actually use this one circuit to do it for all of them. And that's why I'm building it like this. Now I've got two more logic gates here. I like to place things so that they make more sense at least to my brain, I guess. Um, this logic gate is going to be the logic gate that will um, increment the count if station 7 is on. And this one, it's going to be a small logic chain, so the input block of this one is going to input to this one. And this one will do the count for both station 6 and station 5, one out of the output and one out of input block. And how we're going to do that is we're going to just keep shooting increments of 8 at that counter. And the reason we're doing increments of 8 is because no matter what number uh, the station is, uh, station 5 is 16, station 6 is 32, station 7 is 64, and if you keep going higher, station 8 is 128, station 9 would be 256. They're all going to be uh, dividable by 8 because 8 was the number that doubled into all of them. So they will all be able to use uh, the number 8 to reach whatever number we're trying to get to. So we're going to have three counters. That counter is for station 7. This one is for station 6, and this one is for station 5. So what we're going to say is every time we reach the target of our loop here, we'll send an input into that gate. Now we want to make sure this gate is always set right. So the input from our time delayer is going to hit station 7. If station 7 is closed, and uh, a signal comes out of input blocked, we want to make sure this gate is open because his output is going to increment by one that counter. So what we want is we want this counter to be have a target count of eight. I don't want it to display 
because I want this to repeat eight times. So what's going to happen is we're going to do our little loop really quickly and the loop will finish and shoot over to this gate which right now is open because we've told uh, the logic gate for station 7 that if you're closed open this gate to make sure you're pointed at this counter and every time we hit that counter we increment by 1. So what we want to happen is when every time an output comes out of here to increment by 8 that counter. That's our main counter up here. We want it to increment that counter up there by 8 and we want it to happen 8 times. So when this counter reaches the target reach of 8 we want to close this logic gate or in other words we want this circuit to stop. And I also want to just because to be safe when I close that logic gate I want to reset this counter so that I make sure everything is ready for the next time I'm going to uh, run this logic. And the, the last thing I want is when I hit target reached I also want to send an input to that logic gate. And what that's going to do is we're done with 7 now. If we've hit this counter we've it's because this count or this logic gate was closed. So now we need to check if 6 is closed and we need to check if 5 is closed. And that's why they're tied together out of the output. If 6 is open, it'll send a message to 5. If 5 is closed, it'll go and do the 5 count. Well, we have to program it in case all of them are closed. So now we want to say, alright, if number 6 is closed and it gets an input, we want to close this logic gate because it's a logic chain down to this logic gate. And we also want to just double check that this logic gate is open because the output is going to point at this counter which is going to be set to a target count of 4. And that's because station 6's value is 32 and to, we're going to be incrementing this counter by 8 every time and 4 times 8 is 32. So we want this to happen 4 times. So we are going to say new logic output increment by 1 him but also output will increment by 8 our main counter. And when he reaches his target which is 4 he is going to close that logic gate and he's also going to send an input to the station 5 logic gate to see if we have to run uh, the logic for station 5. I know this starts to sound complicated and it, but it's really pretty simple once you work it all out. I do have a drawing that I'm following obviously I'm not just doing this off the top of my head uh, although if you looked at my drawing you'd probably laugh at me because it probably looks just as bad as it sounds like I'm explaining this. But what we're going to say is so now we finished the station 6 which is number 32's logic and we want to move on to 16, station 5. And so we're going to say if his input is blocked he opens that gate that's already done. So if his input is blocked we want to ensure that logic gate is closed and we want to ensure this logic gate is closed because we're going to be coming out of the input block of that logic gate. So input block is going to increment by 1 this logic gate which is set to 2 by default and 2 is what we need because 2 times 8 is 16. So we're also going to say input block increment by 8 target reached you're done. You just close this logic gate to stop the loop and we don't need to do anything else because after station 5 we're done adding all of the possible bits in this circuit.
that we might possibly have. So, now we want to go back to the original toy box. Alright, so we are now back in the first toy box. And hopefully our logic is flawless, or else I am looking forward to a bunch of cutting and editing as I try to figure out what I did wrong. But I'm pretty sure this should work exactly as advertised. Usually I test these things out in my own toy boxes before I record the store, but I was fairly confident this time, so I didn't even bother doing that. So, I'm going to make a second button, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, as always, uh, when we're doing a single, uh, when we want to increase this count by one, we're sending the input into this first logic gate. Um, but I'm sure there's people who are sitting there going, okay, that's great if my game is only going to ever score by one at a time. What if I want to uh, increase the score by two, or I want to increase it by four, and at which point I say thank you very much, because if you'd said the number three, I probably would have cursed a little bit. But Two and four are really easy, because if you want to increase the score by two, so you're doing a collection challenge or something, where you want the score to increase by two, you wouldn't send to the least significant bit here for those scores. You'd send to the logic gate that controls the number two, and you'd just send an input there. Same as if you want to increase this overall score by four, you'd just send some logic an input to this logic gate, and it would increase your count by four. So what I'm going to do is this button should already be hooked up to the counter in the logic gate uh, to increment by one. Now I want a fairly high count to test this box out. So I'm actually going to increment, have this button be able to increment by eight. So I can get a higher number a little faster. And I'm only tying it to this counter, as I said before, for visual reference. Uh, so the player can actually see what their score is. So what number should I go? I want it fairly high. I could go all the way up to 127, but I don't really want to do 127. Um, let's go for 87. That's 1 under 88. And that should have a fair number of logic gates open. So I'm going to go for the number 87 and see what happens when I step through this toy box. <laughs> Is that not a thing or beauty? Look at how quickly that went. And it knew perfectly. It brought us to the number 87. And now, just to verify that everything is working really, really great, I'm going to hook up a little button right here. And I'm going to make sure that if I push it, our counter is going to keep going up from the number 87. Look at that. Excellent. Well, there we have it. There we have now modified our... Um, toy box, so now instead of a 4-bit that we're passing between toy boxes, we've just successfully passed an 80, or a 7-bit digit between two toy boxes, which allows you to send the numbers between 0 and 127 uh, between as many toy boxes as you need, as long as you're willing to put all this logic in. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it actually benefits someone, and someone can use it for... Uh, a toy box you're trying to work on. 